السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Before I start the khutbah, I request the brothers, can you please push yourself to the right side and have more spaces for those who are coming now. So please move forward and have no gaps in front of you, fill the gaps and give the spaces for those who are coming or who are at the back. Jazakumullahu khaira. Please step forward so we have enough spaces at the back. Jazakumullahu khaira. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa sayyati a'malina man yahdi allahu fala mudilla lah ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد to proceed, my dear brothers and sisters, our beloved guest is, ab is about to depart. Not long ago, my dear brothers and sisters, we were discussing and welcoming this blessed guest. And as far as, as a, a blink of an eye, we are at the end of this blessed month. <coughs> Subhanallah, ayyam and ma'adudat. Indeed, prescribed number of days, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescri prescribed it in Surah Al Baqarah. My dear brothers and sisters, some of us fail to prepare for this blessed month of Ramadan and rush to get into this spiritual mode. Others, they are struggling to keep the momentum as the month is about to finish and they have started dropping in their ibadat. And some, they don't even realize until it is over. Ibad Allah, my dear brothers and sisters, ذَهَبَ مُعْظَمُ هَذَا الشَّهْرِ the most of this month has gone. But the most important part of this month is it still left. Is it still remained. 
The first 20 days that we have spent in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are gone. And the last 10 nights, last 10 days of this blessed month are left, which are the most important days and nights of the month. And my dear brothers and sisters, as the month or as the 20 days has departed quickly, the rest of these 10 days will depart even quicker than the 20 days. So it is an opportunity for all of us and it is essential for all of us to take advantage as much as we can because we cannot guarantee that we will live next day, let alone next year. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my dear brothers and sisters, has bestowed upon us this blessing, this great blessing of witnessing the blessed month of Ramadan. And Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah, he summarized this in a beautiful way. He said, إِذَا شَارَفَتْ He said, إِنَّ الْخَيْلَ إِذَا شَارَفَتْ نِهَايَةَ الْمِضْمَارِ بَذَلَتْ قُصَارَ الْجُهْدِ لِتَفُوزَتْ سِبَاقْ فَلَا تَكُنِ الْخَيْلُ أَفْطَنَ مِنْكْ فَإِنَّ الْأَعْمَالَ بِالْخَوَاتِيمِ فَإِنَّكَ إِذَا لَمْ تُحْسِنِ الْإِسْتِقْبَالَ لَعَلَّكَ تُحْسِنُ الْوَدَاعَ Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah, he said, when the racehorse knows that it is nearing the end of the track, it exerts all its effort to win the race. So don't allow the racehorse to be cleverer than you. For verily the deeds are judged by their conclusions. So if you didn't do or if you didn't welcome the Ramadan, with good, perhaps you will finish it with good. So this is the reality of these 10 days, of these 10 nights, my dear brothers and sisters. As all of us, we know and we have heard many times that these 10 nights of the month of Ramadan are the best nights of the entire year. There is no night that is better than these 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. Not even the night of Arafah. Not even the night of Eid al-Fitr or Eid al-Adha. And why is that? Because in these 10 nights, there is a night that is known as Laylatul Qadr. وَمَا أَدْرَاكُمْ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ And what do you know about this night? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it is us who have sent the book, the Quran, on this glory night, on this night of Al Qadr. And what will make you to realize what the glory night of Al Qadr is? Laylatul Qadri Khayrum min Alfi Shahr. The night of glory is better than a thousand months, better than 83 years and four months. On this night, the angels and Jibreel alayhi salam descend by the permission of their Lord. Salamun hiya hatta matla'i al-fajr. And this night is all peace until the break of dawn. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my dear brothers and sisters, in Surah Al-Dukhan, He said, إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةٍ مُبَارَكَةٍ Verily, it is us who sent this book of Qur'an on the blessed night. That is the night of Al-Qadr. فِيهَا يُفْرَقُ كُلُّ أَمْرٍ حَكِيمٍ on this night, every single matter is ordained. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this blessed night special characteristic which make it unique. On this night, 
the Quran was sent down. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described it as being better than a thousand months. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described it as being blessed. On this night, the angels and Ibjibreel alayhi salam descend. And on that night, every matter of wisdom is ordained. What do we know about this Layla? What do we know about this night, my dear brothers and sisters? Why it is called, why is it called Laylatul Qadr? Because of the honor. A person who stays up during the night of Al Qadr, seeking forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is, has, it, it has is become a man of honor. And this is one of the meanings of this Al-Qadr, that it is from the honor. Because of its special characteristics, the night is honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a person who says up and worship Allah in, the, in that night, he becomes an honor man. Also it was, called, it was said that it is known as Laylatul Qadr because the earth is constricted by the great number of angels on that night. There is no space left for them. Subhanallah. And also it was called that it is known as Laylatul Qadr because it is from a taqdeer. Because every single, every single matter of human being is decreed on that night. When will he die? What will he, will he have for the ne next of the year? Every single matter is ordained on that night of Al-Qadr. Ibad Allah, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah's Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man qama laylata al-qadri imanan wa ihtisaba ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi. Whoever stays up during the night of laylata al-qadr with faith and hope of earning the reward, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive his previous sins. All of his previous sins will be forgiven. As some of the scholars have said, they are related to the minor sins and not the major sins. And my dear brothers and sisters, this great night, the night of glory, the night of honor, the night of decree is in the last ten nights and it is in the one of the odd nights. As the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Iltamisuha fil ashri al awakhiri fil witr. Seek this Laylatul Qadr in the odd numbered of nights. Yesterday was the first odd number of these ten nights 21st, then 23rd, then 25th, then 27th, and the last one is 29th. And some of the scholars, my dear brothers and sisters, of the view that it could be on the even night as well. And this is a very strong opinion of Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. Therefore, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to seek it in the ten nights. That's why the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to sit in i'tikaf to seek this night in ten nights. Now my question to myself, and to everyone who is here, what have we done for this blessed night? How much have we prepared for this blessed night? And how much do we strive in this blessed night to be forgiven, to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? As I have mentioned at the earliest of my khutbah, that unfortunately, the phenomena we have that people strive and do the hard work in the first 20 days and they get distracted in last 10 days with the preparation of Eid and so on and so forth. But if we knew that the last 10 nights are the best nights of the entire year, in these 10 nights we have a night that is better than the thousand month. All of us, we have heard about this again and again, every year. 
But my question is, my dear brothers and sisters, how much do we strive? What do we do to seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And this is not the attitude, this is not the practice of our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That we strive in the first 20 days and then we let the last 10 days go easily without any hard work, without worshipping extra or increasing our ibadah in these 10 nights. What was the attitude of, of our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What was his practice? Aisha radiallahu anha, she narrated, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يجتهد في العشر الأواخر من رمضان ما لا يجتهد في غيرها. شي رضي الله عنها said the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم used to strive hard in worshiping Allah سبحانه وتعالى during the last ten days of Ramadan in a way that he did not strive at any other times. And in another hadith. He said, أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان إذا دخل العشر أحيا الليل وأيقظ أهله وشد مئزره وشد مئزره. He said, when the last ten days of Ramadan enters, the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم used to tighten his waist belt. What does that mean? Extra effort to do more, to do hard work. To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more and increase the ibadah in these 10 nights, in these 10 days. And he would pray all the night and he used to keep his family awake for the prayers. This is the attitude, this is the example and practice of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we should follow the example of, of, of our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for he is the best example. And my dear brothers and sisters, we should strive hard in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to be more clever than the horse that is in race. The horse, he, it knows when it has to exert all its effort to win the race. So it wouldn't be wise for us to let these 10 nights, to let these 10 days go without increasing our ibadat, without seeking forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these 10 nights. And my dear brothers and sisters, if we look at the environment, at the atmosphere of this month of Ramadan, everything is easy. Fasting has become easy. Praying taraweeh or tahajjud or qiyam has become easy. Doing good has become easy. Staying away from haram has become easy. Why? Because every single one in your house, in your society, in your congregation, in your community is doing the same. It's not only you who is fasting. It's not only you who is praying taraweeh. It's not only you who is doing extra and increasing in his or her ibadat. It's everyone. So my dear brothers and sisters, if we don't grab this opportunity and seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these 10 nights, in these 10 days, then when? The doors of Jannah are open. All doors are open. None of those doors are closed. And there's a caller announces, Ya baghi al khayri aqbil. Or the seeker of good, come near, come closer. Wa ya baghi al sharri aqsir. Or the seeker of bad or, or evil, stop. Hada. أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى وبعد As we have all, all, already entered the last 10 days and the last 10 nights of this blessed month of Ramadan, my dear brothers and sisters, yesterday, yesterday was the first odd night that we have witnessed, that we have worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in it. Now we have four odd nights are left, and as in general, we have nine 
nights left to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to increase our ibadat in these days. As verily no one knows where will he be in the next year. Will we be able to witness this blessed month of Ramadan with the health that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us? Will we be in the same situation as we are right now? Able to pray, come to the taraweeh, able to fast? No one knows. And the wise person is who grabs the opportunities rather than delaying them. Now my advice would be here, my dear brothers and sisters, in these remaining days and nights, what should we focus and concentrate on? Number one, as-salah, as-salah, which was the advice of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam at the time of his death. As-salah, as-salah, grab your prayer, guard your prayers. And my dear brothers and sisters, we see the phenomena. People, they are coming every night for taraweeh, but then they miss the obligatory prayers. Not only in the masjid, they miss it to pray it on its time. And know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves from his servant, from his slave, to observe the fara'id. It is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the whole taraweeh, than the whole tahajjud. Allah loves from his servant to observe the fara'id. Five daily prayers should be prayed on time in congregation if you live nearby and not just the taraweeh. And my dear brothers and sisters, if you have built that habit of praying in the masjid, let it be continued after the month of Ramadan. And if you are among those who pray five times a day, who observe their five daily prayers, then increase in your nawafil. Don't be negligent of your nawafil and the importance of the nawafil. Don't we know that on the day of judgment, Allah will ask his angels, Look at my servant's deed. What did he do with his obligations, with his obligatory prayers? And if anything was missing, Allah will ask the angel to see if this servant of me has any nawafil prayers, which will compensate, which will make up for the fara'il. So it is very important that we increase, if we pray five times a day, we increase in our nawafil, we increase in our taraweeh, in our qiyam, in our tahajjud, in Ramadan and outside Ramadan. Unfortunately, we see many brothers, they pray five times, but they are very heedless about their nawafil. They don't pray at all, or they miss it here and there. We are in desperate need of those nawafil because Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also told us in another hadith, a person he prays his obligatory prayer, but he get nothing in terms of reward for that prayer. He might get one ninth of tenth or seven or eight and six and so and so forth. Meaning the reward he will get sometimes just ninth of the tenth or eight or seventh of that tenth and sometimes nothing. So we are in need of those nawafil prayers to make up for our obligatory prayers, to make up for our shortcomings in our fara'il. Number two, my dear brothers and sisters, my advice would be in these 10 nights, in these 10 days, to concentrate and observe is to recite the Qur'an. We are in the month of Qur'an. It's a month in which the Qur'an was sent down, in which the Qur'an was revealed. 27th of Ramadan, the Qur'an was sent down. So we have to increase our recitation. And as the scholar said, in this month of Qur'an, the most beloved act is to recite Qur'an as much as you can. And obviously Qur'an is revealed to understand its meaning as well, not only to recite it. So if you are reciting a page, increase it to two to three. Compete with each other. Finish the whole Qur'an. And even if you can't do that, just do what you can. Never give up. 
This is the month of Quran. So give more priority and increase in your recitation in these remaining days of Ramadan. My third advice, my dear brothers and sisters, would be increase in your dhikr and in your du'as. Dhikr is the most, easiest, most easiest, easiest act of worship. But look at it, my dear brothers and sisters. How many of us do remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frequently? How many of us keep our tongues moist with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Many of us, we don't do that. Yet it is the most easiest. You don't have to pay. You don't have to be in the state of wudu. You don't have to direct the qibla. You can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while you are waiting in your car, while you are queuing up, while you are walking to the masjid, to your house, in between your meetings. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Astaghfirullah al-azim al-ladhi la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum wa tubu ilayhi. And as Sheikh ibn Uthaymin rahimahullah says, Allah with regards to the remembrance of Allah. It is Allah he who gives the ability and tawfiq for someone to remember him constantly, frequently. To keep his tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To keep himself, to keep his heart alive. And the other advice is to keep asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make dua. And listen carefully my dear brothers and sisters. This is the month of dua as it is the month of Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the ayat of fasting. And in between those ayat, he mentioned, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ And if my servant, they ask you about me, I am near to them. He mentioned the ayah of dua. And the scholar said because of its importance. And because this month of, this month of Ramadan is the month of dua. Now, sincerely, Ask yourself, how many times have you raised your hands asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala other than the taraweeh, other than the witr? We see people, they are waiting for, to break their fast, but they are not making du'as. It is a time where it is highly recommended to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for verily your du'a will be accepted. How many times do we take a time to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is the act of worship that is that has been neglected the most in this blessed month of Ramadan, the dua. So in these remaining days, we are in need of those duas. We have to show the, huma, the, the humbleness towards our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by asking Him again and again and again, and knowing and learning the etiquettes of dua, and the best time to make the dua. It is an act of worship, my dear brothers and sisters. It is a weapon of a believer. And finally, my advice for, last these, for, for these 10 days of Ramadan to observe and to concentrate is to sit in i'tikaf. This was the practice of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to maximize the reward. And take, take few days if you can't do 10 days. If you can't sit for 10 days, then few days. Take off from your work. We take off from everything. So why not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why not for the sake of seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why not worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a night that is better than 83 years and 4 months? None of us will be able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 83 years. Even if we are going to be at the age of 100 or 120. Because 20 years... You are young, you are not practicing, and then you are old, not able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why not to take off from your worldly life and give your time for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And not necessarily, my dear brothers and sisters, you have to sit in i'tikaf for 10 days. Come with the intention of sitting in i'tikaf for even one hour, for some times, and you will be rewarded by the merciful, by the Lord of mercy subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, my dear brothers and sisters, remember this great hadith, the serious hadith in which the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that he said, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen three times. And the Sahaba, they have asked him, why did you say Ameen, Ameen three times? What's the reason? And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them that Jibreel came to me and he asked me to say 
Ameen. And I said, Ameen. And in one of those three Ameens, he said, if a person witnesses the month of Ramadan and he doesn't seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may he be perish. So my dear brothers and sisters, if you don't seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then there is a hadith that is really serious. And someone who is just fasting and becoming hungry, not observing the other obligations, not increasing in his ibadat, not doing anything extra, then he is not looking for the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People, they fast and sleep the whole day. And they stay awake the whole night in chatting, in gaming, in and so and so forth. Sometimes in acts, they are involved in acts that are haram. So this person is not seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this person comes under the hadith of Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said Ameen three times. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who seek his forgiveness subhanahu wa ta'ala in these remaining last ten nights of Ramadan. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who stays up for the, in the night or during the night of Al-Qadr and seek reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his forgiveness. هذا وصلوا وسلموا على خير البرية محمد بن عبد الله اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ونبيك محمد اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم اجعلنا ممن يقوم ليلة القدر إيمانا واحتسابا فيغفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان واجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم كل إخواننا المستضعفين المضطهدين في دينهم في كل مكان يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا حي يا قيوم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا Before we start the prayer, again a reminder for those who don't know that raising the hand while the Imam is making dua is not part from the, it's not from the sunnah it's not from the practice of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nor his companions ridwanullahi alayhim and khayrul hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so do not raise your hand while the Imam is praying during the khutbah as it is not narrated by the Messenger of Allah nor his companions awa aqim as salah uh, I would like to uh, request the brothers again, please come forward as much as you can so we have enough spaces for those who are waiting outside. And lean be khwanikum, be gentle and have more spaces for those who are trying to be in this main hall. Jazakumullah khair. And brothers, they can come at the first row here. We have, we have some spaces. So we have at least five, six spaces here. And make sure that you are standing feet to feet and shoulder to shoulder to having the right... Rose. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, Hayya ala salah, Hayya ala al-falah, Wadaqamati al-salat, Wadaqamati al-salah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allah. So what are also straighten the rows and fill the gaps. It's very important to have the straight rows and the way to straighten your rows is to he have your heels at the edge of the line so we can have the straight rows from the back and not from the front ready okay allahu akbar الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم 
مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصلى النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين هل أتاك حديث الغاشية؟ وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تصلى نارا حامية تسقى من عين آنية ليس لهم طعام إلا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يومئذ ناعمة لسعيها راضية 
في جنة عالية لا تسمع فيها لاغية فيها عين جارية فيها سرر مرفوعة وأكواب موضوعة ونمارق مصفوفة وزرابي مبثوثة أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر إلا من تولى وكفر فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله اللهم انت السلام عليك السلام